What is up, beautiful fish lovers, and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today, we will be talking about one of the most overlooked things when creating an ecosystem for your reef tank. Hey guys, it is absolutely great to be back. I've been away for a while. A lot of stuff has happened. I went to the Connecticut Frag Farmers Market. I also moved, a global pandemic happened, and my second son was born. So thanks for tuning back in. Hit that bell so you get notifications on the new videos that are coming up. Also check out the affiliate links below. Sit back and enjoy the episode. So you might have noticed I live in a relatively small apartment. This place is about uh, 750 square feet. And what happens is I get a lot of carbon dioxide in this room. I don't open the windows a lot because there's a lot of dust and there's a ton of construction going on outside. They're doing the green line extension into Boston and that is causing a lot of dust. So overall, I stay pretty clammed up in this space. And the result is tons of CO2 gets produced and that leads to elevated carbon dioxide in my aquarium. So I started looking into different ways to reduce carbon dioxide in the aquarium. One of the most compelling ones that I saw was making, getting a tube from the outside and letting your skimmer draw air in through that tube. Your skimmer is probably the number one thing that has contact with the air and by bringing air in from outside you can really pull out the carbon dioxide. Another thing that you could do is put some sort of carbon scrubbing uh, compound like zeolite in a filter that you bring the air into the skimmer. So that'll actually over time absorb carbon dioxide and reduce how much gets in your tank, allowing you to keep a higher pH. But then I thought to myself, what else creates oxygen and consumes carbon dioxide? That's right, plants. So I got a bunch of plants basically as a mechanism to maybe help absorb some carbon dioxide. For me, this is a potential option because my space is so small that I could actually get enough plants in here to possibly make a difference. Also, I have a ton of light. Look at all these windows. And so that's gonna provide enough light for the plants. If the plants really weren't producing enough oxygen, doing enough photosynthesis, I could even add a little grow light here to really help them shine. So I took a trip to Home Depot and I got these plants and what I didn't realize once until I actually had them in place is how having plants really completes the look of a saltwater aquarium. And when you think about it, you use plants and algae for different things. In this case, I'm trying to use it as a carbon scrubber, but I, or a carbon dioxide scrubber, but I actually didn't buy enough plants, in my opinion, to actually do that. I still think opening a window or bringing different types of air into the tank's the best solution, but what this really did for my tank is just made it look gorgeous. I mean, look at this, it just looks great. So the plants I got here are a corn plant, a Chinese evergreen, and then I have a palm tree back there. Now the corn plant and the Chinese evergreen are pretty indestructible plants. They look awesome, they're easy to take care of. The palm tree back there actually needs a ton of light and it's doing great where it is touching the window, but on the back side here, it's actually not getting enough light and it's not getting enough light spill from my tank. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had time to do a controlled experiment to really see how much plant growth is needed to reduce the carbon dioxide in my environment and if that will affect the pH of my tank. However, I have noticed that me being here has a huge impact on the carbon dioxide in the tank. When I go away for a trip or a vacation, the pH in my aquarium uh, will usually rise maybe 0.3 or 0.4. Um, and that's quite significant. That gets me to just below seven to the into the eight point yada, yada, yada range that I kind of want to be in. So in a second, I'm going to start an awesome montage of how cool this aquarium looks with plants. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the plans for the channel and what we have coming down the pipe. So my next video that I have coming up next week is 10 things I hate about my Red Sea Reefer 650 Peninsula. If you're thinking about buying this ta tank, definitely check out this video. I didn't want my first video coming back to be about things I hate about the aquarium. I wanted to keep it positive, but I think it is important to understand the downsides of this aquarium. Now, don't get me wrong. I still love it. I probably would have still made the decision to purchase it, but there's definitely some features that can be improved. The next video I'm going to be talking about is a final update on the Red Sea Reefer 650 Peninsula. You'll have to check that out to really see what is happening and why is it the final update for now or if there's a future for this tank. 
then I'm going to do a music montage of the tank. So this is in three weeks. I just really want to showcase it to some relaxing music so people can enjoy it without the normal voice track. Next, I'm going to do a video on how to move an aquarium and move a shark. And not everything goes as planned, so definitely check that out. Finally, I'll talk about how to install a booster pump if you have low water pressure. Like I said, I moved and my new place has low water pressure, so I had to uh, figure out how to address that. Next, we're going to show you the new place, the new setup, what's going on, how Napoleon's doing, and all that jazz. So that's going to be a great video. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's pretty awesome coming down the pipe. Also, I wanted to take attention to the comments section. Uh, I'll answer all your comments in this video. So. Please, anything that you want to ask about the tank or my setup, please let me know. Uh, this was a long experiment on what it was like to both have a bunch of fish with a shark to see what was compatible. Also, I spent a lot of time um, kind of testing out this idea of using a bare bottom tank with a white bottom. Uh, when I decided to do a white bottom on this tank, it was the only tank that I had seen that was a saltwater tank that actually had a white bare bottom. My thought was that would make it look a little bit more natural, that would make it look like sand, and I actually did end up liking it in the end. It definitely was more work as the tank was settling in. It would definitely collect more noticeable algae. Until the tank really got up and running and the algae got really low, um, it, it didn't look super great and then it started looking awesome and then it got covered with coralline algae and just kind of looked cool. And a lot of people actually don't notice that I don't have sand when you look at this tank from a distance. And that's a way different experience than if you have a uh, bare bottom tank with black on the bottom. People definitely notice that you don't have sand in it. Um, other things about this tank, I just, I've just really loved it. I've also settled on a new light setup. I'm basically doing all Kessel 360X's and that's been working really well for me. It's been growing coral really well and I've seen better coral coloration and growth with the 360X's over the 360's and I think it has to do with the more broader color spectrum but regardless I'm super super happy about that. Alright so next we're gonna get to this montage and just sit back you know, maybe crack open a soda, eat some popcorn, and enjoy these shots of the tank. I think that it's finally really come together and looks really, really awesome. So I want to know, what do you guys think? Do plants really bring the aquarium to life? Can you actually consider houseplants as part of the aquarium ecosystem because they do scrub a little bit of CO2 out of the atmosphere? How many plants do you think it will need to, will need to have to actually make a noticeable difference on the pH of the tank? Uh, leave whatever questions you want in the comment below, but in my opinion, no reef aquarium is complete without some plants. And I think that's why there's a lot of drive for people to get mangroves because it adds that different part of green. It kind of places the aquarium in the environment and you can get that same sort of enjoyable uh, effect from regular houseplants. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. I'm really trying to get to 10,000 subscribers so we can start putting t-shirts online. I can start doing stories on YouTube. So subscribe, try to get me up to that 10,000 number. And another way that you can support the channel is I have Amazon affiliate links below and it doesn't cost you anything. If you buy anything on Amazon through that link, I get a small portion of that to support the channel. So thank you guys very much and I'll catch you on another episode of Puff Daddy Reads.